we have your Bibles, let's turn with us now to Mark, the fourth chapter. And so this week, you know, and then on top of that, Dan got real sick. We're praying for Dan. We're believing for his healing. And so, you know, things happen, don't they? Things happen. If you're not careful, you will begin thinking that you are the causer of the things. Or you'll begin thinking that it's because the things are happening, it's because you did or didn't do something. Anybody ever been through that? I used to think if I did not pay my tithe, that, I, that my tires would blow out on the way to work the very next morning. Because that happened to me once. I didn't pay my tithe and my tire blew. It could be because my tires were so old and dry rotted that they didn't make it to work that day. But I thought for without a shadow of a doubt, it was because I didn't pay my tithe. That God was mad at me. Anybody ever been that way? I guess I'm the only one. Because we've been there, haven't we? We've been there when stuff happens. And when stuff happens, your head starts filling up with all these thoughts. I should have done this, and I should have done that. And if I'd only have been this way, and if I'd only have been that way. And we get all these thoughts with all these things when, in all reality, life is happening. Pastor Dan says all the time, when planet Earth comes after you, it's planet Earth that's coming after you. But we're going to break it down a little bit this morning. Amen? So in Mark chapter 4, and if it's not on the screen, it's okay, I can read it to you. Oh, Shauna's back there. Shauna's doing like three jobs right now. So Mark chapter 4, we're going to pick it up out of the Amplified. And we're going to go start with verse 35. It's scripture we all know. It's one of the greatest Sunday school scriptures of all times. But in Mark 4, 35, it says, On that same day, how many knows that stuff can happen all in one day? On that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And leaving the throng, he took him with, he, they took him with them just as he was. And in the boat in which he was sitting and the other boats were with him. Verse 37, and a furious storm of wind of hurricane proportions arose and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming filled. Have you ever felt like life is just coming after you so much that I, we can't put any more in my boat? I am up to, my mom used to get mad at me and she would say, I am up to here with you. I'm up to here. And then someday she goes, I'm up to here now with you. When she got there, there was no coming back. But have you ever been that way? You've been up to here? Your boat feels filled. It's just filled. And it's just filled up in so much ways that it's like, I don't think we can hold one more thing. I don't think I can handle one more thing. And it said that it became filled, verse 38, but he himself was in the stern of the boat, asleep on a leather cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Now let me ask you, have you ever, have you ever had something happen in your life and the person who was with you in your life, they just acted like they really just didn't care about it and it bothered you? You're freaking out and they're not freaking out and that just kind of bugs you? I remember one time when I was real little, growing up here in Leesburg, we had antenna TV. Everybody remember the antenna? And we'd have to go out and turn it just right. And we lived way out here, so, so antenna was St. Louis back then, you know. You had to turn it just right and hold your tongue just right. Or then you'd get out the tinfoil. Anybody ever done the tinfoil thing? And you start squeezing the tinfoil. These kids have no idea. No idea the things that we had to do, the life we lived. But here's what would happen when you lived out here. When a storm would come and a storm would start coming, here's what would happen. The TV would work really good. 
It was like everything's working in the atmosphere and the TV is working really good. So I remember one time, I was probably five, sitting in our living room at Crossroads. We lived out at Crossroads. Sitting in my living room and watching Sesame Street. I'll never forget, I was watching Sesame Street. And my mom, because the phones worked really good then too, my mom is on the phone with her friend telling them, they're just talking about the black the black skies in the air and everything just looks really black and all that. And they're calm. And my dad comes running in and starts screaming and hollering, everybody to the basement. There's one. I see one down the street and he starts freaking out. We all get to the basement. But we were, but I was mad because we didn't have DVR then. And I was mad because I could finally watch TV. I was at rest. I had no idea that there was a storm going on. The fact was, I probably knew there was a storm going on, and I didn't really care. So here, the disciples are out on this boat, and they see the waves crash it into the boat. They see the tornadoes. They see the hurricanes. They see all this. And Jesus, he knew that there was a storm going on up there, but he didn't care because he was at rest. He was at rest. He didn't care. It was well with his soul. He didn't care. Because no matter what the storms look like on the outside, there was no storm on the inside with him. Anybody ever had a storm going on on the outside, but on the inside, you're like, I'll I'll be okay. We'll be okay. And that's how this was. Jesus is asleep. He's perfectly asleep on a leather cushion, just sound asleep. Jesus knew that the storm was there. Jesus knew that there was, Jesus knew, but there was something going on. But see, here's what the disciples did wrong. They looked at what the storm looked like. They saw the wind. They saw the waves. They saw all this stuff going on, and they forgot what Jesus said. Let me back it up. Jesus said in verse 35, let us go to the other side. He said, let us go to the other side. In verse 37 and 38, a big storm happens, and the disciples then, because of what they see, they think we're all going to die, and this is all over, and there is no such thing. But they forget that verse 35 was already spoken and he said, let us go to the other side. So don't let what you see make you forget what he said. Because what you see may not look pretty and what you see may not look good. And what you see may not be the greatest thing in the world. But what he said was there was another side of this. There is another side to this. And he didn't say, okay, y'all get in the boat. And you all get to the other side, and I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you that you make it. Good luck to you. You know, I got a friend of mine, sweet Christian woman from Texas, little Cuban lady. And she, 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 she does not, Stephen Sandy know who she is, and she does not believe in luck at all. She doesn't believe in luck at all. So she always says, God bless you, God bless you, da 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 But if you're irritating her, She'll say, okay, best of luck to you. (laughs) Best of luck. Best of luck to you. Why? Because we don't have luck, do we? We're not, our lives isn't based on luck. Our life is based on what God said he will do, he will do. If he said that by his stripes you are healed, then baby, by by his stripes you are healed. If he said that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, then he's never going to leave you or forsake you. But just because he is asleep in the boat doesn't mean that he doesn't care about you. Doesn't mean that he forgot about you. You know, every good story has a beginning and a middle and an end. And the beginning, you know, every good story, the beginning and the end should kind of go together. I believe this, the guy should always get the girl. Me and Hannah watched some movie. We'll be married seven years tomorrow. And so Hannah and I, we were watching some movie. We just, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's all Hannah. <laughs> all the applause go to, goes to Hannah and Jesus. Um, 
But we were, we just got married, and we watched some movie. I forget what it was. And we're watching this whole chick flick. And it's this movie about this guy and this lady that were together forever. Then they break up. But then they still had this great apartment, so they stayed together, but they were broken up. And in the end, I knew that they were going to get back together. And in the end, they like shook hands and like walked away. And I was like, this is the stupidest movie I've ever seen in my life. Because every good movie, every good story has a great ending. But in the middle, in the middle, when you, this is one of the only things I remember from English class. In the middle, they call it the conflict. Every good story has a conflict. We like to say what? In the meantime, they were here. And in the meantime, they were there. And in the meantime, this happened. No, it really is a meantime, isn't it? Some of you may be going through a mean time. In the mean time. And in the mean time, you think that God forgot about you. And in the meantime, you think that God doesn't care about you. And in the meantime, you think, doesn't God see what I am going through? Have we ever done that? Doesn't God see? Doesn't God care what I am going through right now? Yeah, he does. But God's not good. I... God told me this yesterday. It might be just for me. But he said this to me. He said, I will not join your freak out party. <laughs> so when you're freaking out, I'm not coming. You can send me. I'm not going to RSVP. I'm not going to attend. I am not coming to your freak out party. I'm going to be asleep and resting and calming down. I am not coming while you freak out. Think about it. But what did they do? Hi, Casey. Good to see you. But what did they do? Let's go back to verse 37. So a furious storm of wind, a hurricane proportions, so that it was already becoming filled. Verse 38. But he himself was in the stern of the boat asleep, and they awoke him and said to him, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Do you not care? Do you not care? Have you ever said that? Don't you just care? I just need you to... Have you ever said that to your spouse? Don't you just care about me? Don't you just care about this? Why? Because somebody isn't sharing in your emotions. Early on when me and Hannah first got married, she would get mad about something. Well, I wouldn't get so mad about it. And somebody said something to her on Facebook, and a whole little Facebook spat happened. And so Hannah's upset about it. Well, me being me, I'm like, well, if you wouldn't have put it on Facebook to begin with, you'd never have had this problem. That was the wrong thing to say at that time. (laughs) Why? Because she wanted me, as she said, I want you to rally with me. I want you to rally with me. Why? Because sometimes when life is coming, we just want to have a rally, don't we? Because what's a rally? A rally is where everybody is cheering and agreeing with the same exact thing at all times. So we just want to have a rally where everybody is just, yes, I know life is really hard. and Yes, I know things are bad. And everybody's having a big time pity party. Jesus isn't coming to your pity party either. But Jesus will never leave you. Just because he doesn't come to your party doesn't mean he left you. He's just in the other room when you calm down. I will be right over here. But here's the thing. He's not, but see, here's what happened. Let's go to 39. So he arose. I love this. He arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, hush now, be still, be muzzled. And the wind ceased, sank to rest as if exhausted by its beating. And there was immediately what? A great calm. Because what happens when you decide, I'm going to quit freaking out, and I'm just going to turn to Jesus. And as soon as Jesus stands up on the inside of you, there's a great calm. There's a hush. There's a hush. There's a quietness. It shuts up. The beating stops. The storms. The storm was still going to be somewhere else, but it was no longer going to be around them. King James says what? He said, peace be still so he said hush be quiet but I love that and he arose and he rebuked the wind 
he rebuked the wind. You know, Shauna said it earlier. It's not, it's Christ in you. He is in you. Your identity is found in Christ. So if your identity is found in Christ, if Christ stood up and he rebuked the wind, then you can stand up and you can rebuke the wind. You can stand up and you can rebuke the wind. See, grace hasn't kept us from having storms in life. That's a misconception that somebody thought of, that because we got grace, we don't have problems. Hashtag, I am too blessed to be stressed. God love you. Go for it. No, grace hasn't, grace isn't like you don't have problems. No, grace is you have the power and you have the authority just as Jesus to tell those problems they don't have an authority in your life. That is what grace is. It's the energy of God on the inside of you that if Jesus stood up, I can stand up. If Jesus stood up and told the wind to shut up and be quiet, then I can. I don't have to enjoy my mean time. I don't have to, I don't have to take it. You know, we get this idea sometimes that, and it is sometimes, you know, well, it's just life. You know, we've said it, haven't we, Dave? Well, you know, it's just life. It's just life. It's just life. No, what the storm is is an attack. Because what the storm is, the storm, because what happened was when they got in the storm, they forgot all about the other side. Because the storm is an assignment to keep you from the other side. Because, see, we all have another side. We all have another side of the story. There's something better on the other side. So when Jesus got up and he told the wind and he told the storm to stop and be quiet and he hushed it, he didn't say, okay, let's go fishing. No, they kept going to the other side. Do you know what was on the other side? You can read it in, Luke, in Mark 5. In Mark 5 on the other side was a man who was possessed with demons. It says that as soon as the boat landed, this man who had terrorized the whole countryside and wouldn't talk to anybody runs up and sees Jesus and calls him by name. And what did Jesus do? He rebuked and he cast the demons out of the man... And they go into what? A a herd of pigs, and the pigs go over the cliff, and that was the first Bay of Pigs invasion. (laughs) But they go over the cliff. And what? The man, let's go to the, uh, I think it's like verse 12, Shauna. Doesn't Shauna do a good job? Actually, let's go, I wasn't... Let's just do this. Let's go to verse 18. And I love this. Because he cast him out of the man. The man was so happy. Verse 18. And when he had stepped into the boat, the man who had been controlled by the unclean spirits kept begging him that he might be with him. Why? Because once, because once you see who Jesus really is for you, and once you see that the devil doesn't have to terrorize you anymore, and once you see that those spirits that were terrorizing him didn't belong in him, once you see you don't want to leave Jesus. You don't want to leave him. If he's going in the boat, I'm going in the boat with him too. I'm going right in the boat. Why? Because you don't have to take the terrorism of the devil. You don't have to take it. So, verse 19. But Jesus refused to permit him, but he said, Go home to your own family and relatives and friends, and bring back word to them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had sympathy for you and mercy on you. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, You don't have to physically be with me. But you can go home and you can now change your whole family. You can impact your whole family. That's the first thing that was on the other side waiting for him. The other things that was on the other side, we don't have to go there. But the other things on the other side was Jairus' daughter who had died. And while Jairus begged Jesus to come heal his daughter, what did Jesus do? As he is walking, a woman touches the hem of Jesus' garment. And what happens? She's healed. And then Jesus goes, walks into the house of Jairus' house, and they all said, it's too late, she's dead. And what did Jesus say? 
She is not dead, for she is asleep. And Jesus healed her, and she rose from the dead. The long side of the story is this. When you're going through the storms, remember there's another side. There is, there is an assignment to keep you from the other side. Because if Jesus healed the sick and he laid hands on them, the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells within you. And that same power that Christ used, that same power that Christ, that, that woman touched him and she was healed, that same power is on the inside of you. Jesus is on the inside of you. His healing power will stand up on the inside of you. Not just for you, but for all those around you. There is a calling and a petition on every person's life. It's not just to be a preacher. And it's not just to be a teacher. But it's to be a Sunday school teacher. It's to be a janitor. It's to be whatever God has called you to be. It's to be that, not for yourself, but for the people on the other side. So when they got to the other side, there was a reason they had to go. So when the storms of life are crashing in on you, just go, I'm going to the other side. We're going to the other side. Something good is over there. There's a reason I'm going this way, and I am going to the other side. Because Jesus didn't cause the storm. God didn't cause the storm. That's a lie from the pits of hell that tells you that, well, God made you sick. Teach you a lesson. That's a lie. God didn't do that to you, but God is going to use it to get to bring you to another side of it. There's something better over here. I'm believing that my daddy is healed and whole in the name of Jesus. And he's going to live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. But I'm also believing that for your relatives that may not like you right now, they may not like the fact that you love Jesus. There might be some storms going on in your life. I'm believing there's another side to that. I'm believing that there's another side to anything that the enemy is dealing, is trying to resist you on. There's something good for you right there. There's something good. You know, Paul, we don't really have to go there either, Shauna, but in Acts 27, there's a story about Paul. And it says that Paul, he was on a prison ship. And while he's on this ship, he's going to Crete. And Paul, as a prisoner, tells the prison guards we should not go because a bad storm is coming. He was like a spiritual meteorologist. And he's like, so we shouldn't go because a storm is coming and we really shouldn't go. But they went anyway. There was just a light breeze when they left the dock. They get in the middle of the ocean. And a nor'easter starts blowing in. And it says that they literally tied themselves to, to the middle part of the boat. And they literally anchored themselves into it. And it says that while everybody is crying and saying we're going to die and saying we're done, that it says that Paul stood up in the middle of that boat and he said, Brothers, cheer up. Now let me ask you a minute here. Let's just talk, let's just talk for a minute. If, somebody, if there was something going on out here or something and everybody's running around and I just said, okay, everybody, let's just cheer up. Let's just cheer up. Let's have a little pep rally and let's just cheer up. And everybody is like, no, we got to go. We got to get out of here. But Paul, he just said, no, everybody, let's cheer up. And this is what he said. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. Verse 23, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, verse 24, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. C25, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be as it was told to me. You know, cheer is not so much joy as it is courage. That's why they call them cheerleaders. They're not out there. 
the, they were originally supposed to go out there not just to like rah rah shish kamba, but to actually help bring courage to the other team, to the other people. Because so when Paul says, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, and it shall be even as it was told me. What does that mean? I see what I see, but I'm not going to forget what he told me. I see the storm, and I see the waves, and I can see it. But I don't live by my feelings, do I? I don't live by my senses. I live by the Spirit of God on the inside of me. For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Not I that lives, but Christ lives within me. And this life I now live, I live for the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Galatians 2.20 That is who I live for. So when Paul says, Sirs, be of good cheer. What does that mean? Don't get mad at God. Don't get freaking out. Everybody just calm down. Because it's going to be just what he said it's going to be. If he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you, then he is never going to leave you nor is he ever going to forsake you. If he said I will love you to the end of the age, then you can bank on it that every birthday you're getting a birthday card because he loves you. He loves you. If he died for one person on this whole entire planet, he died for you. He died for you. Let's go to John 16:33. Jesus said this. So John 16 starts off, most of the whole chapter of John 16 is Jesus telling his disciples of his departing. It's Jesus telling them that he's going to leave them and that he's going to die, but that he will raise from the dead. Then he kind of gets into a little bit about they'll be persecuted and the things of life that they are going to go through. But John 16.33, he sums it up like this. He says, these things that I have spoken to you. So that, let's go to, can we do Amplified? The Queen James Version. It gives more explanation than it needs to. But I like it. So I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation trials and distress and frustration has anybody ever had that i have a three-year-old in the world you will have tribulation anybody have that in the world you will have trials in the world you will have distress anybody ever have frustration frustration man it's like it's just frustrating it's just frustrating you know it's funny because i have a three-year-old and she is like, you know, if I tell her no, it's like she has tribulation and trials and frustration. And I just sit back and I'm like, this must be how I look to God. Because it's like, you think you got problems. You have no idea what's going on. But in the world, you'll have tribulation, trials, distress, and frustration. That sounds like the Hee Haw National Anthem, doesn't it? Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Have we ever felt that way? We feel that way because the world is that way. See, Tony's back there singing it, man. He can, I mean... Even that song, if Tony sings, would probably make you cry. But, you know, yeah, in the world, it feels like some days the Hee Haw National Anthem. In the world, some days it feels like that. But it's not that way in Jesus. It's not that way in Jesus. That's why Jesus said, because in me. You're, not, you're of the world, but you're not in the world. You're of it, but you're not in it. Because in me, you will have perfect peace and confidence. Perfect peace. So Jesus says this, but be of good cheer. There's that word again. There's that word again. Be of good cheer. 
And I love this. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. And be undaunted. Be undaunted. Anybody know what undaunted is? It's kind of like that word I preached last time, cogitate. I had to look it up. So undaunted means this. Not afraid to keep going or doing something in spite of issues or calamity. Not stopping for anything. So in the world you will have troubles, frustration, distress, but be undaunted. Don't stop. Don't stop. Be undaunted. Just keep living your life in me. Keep living your life in me. Keep enjoying what I have already done for you. Keep enjoying what I have done. Don't stop. Take courage. You know, one of the greatest philosophers of our day, John Wayne, said, courage is being scared to death but saddling up anyway. You know what? You got to saddle up anyway. No matter on what you see and no matter what it looks like, I am not going to stop I am not going to stop Winston Churchill said when you're going through hell keep going just keep going I am not going to stop I'm not going to take a vacation I'm not going to I'm not going to stop for a picnic in these storms I am just going to keep going cuz here's what happens This is what I love cuz this is what Jesus says for I have overcome the world So in the world, let's go back to it. So in the world, there is tribulation. And in the world, there is trials. And in the world, there is distress. And in the world, there is frustration. But be of good cheer. Be undaunted, for I have already overcome the world. So yeah, you see all this frustration, and you see all this distress, and you see all this stuff. I've already taken care of it. It's already been handled. I got it covered. And I love this part. For I have deprived it of its power to do what? To harm you. For I have deprived it of its power. What happens when you deprive something? You kill it. If you quit feeding it, not to mess with my wife, but we have a plant. Her mom gave her this plant. These flowers are beautiful. Well, it begins to... It has been deprived. (laughs) And because it's been deprived, it's dead. And I'm like, let's throw it out. Let's just throw it out. Now, Hannah being more like God, no, all we got to do is just water it a little bit more. We just got to keep watering it. Why? Because your life might feel deprived, but you just got to let Jesus water you a little bit more. You just got to hook up to Jesus a little bit more. You got to get into Jesus. Because it's not... We'll go back to the top because Jesus said, so that in me you may have perfect peace. I don't want to make no one mad, but you're not going to have perfect peace in Donald Trump. You're not going to have perfect peace in the Republican Party. You're not going to have perfect peace on Fox News. You're not going to have perfect peace in the economy. You're not going to have perfect peace in me. You are only going to have perfect peace in Jesus because that is where it's found, in Jesus. Jesus. So in the middle of a storm and in the middle of the worst thing, you can just say, I have perfect peace and confidence. I have perfect peace and confidence. In the middle of frustration, you can have perfect peace and confidence. Frustration. You know, you know, stuff happens. Yes, that's frustrating. Stuff happens. But you're going to the other side of it. You're going to the other side. You're going to be undaunted. You're not, it's not going to stop you. This isn't going to stop you. you. Ever had something just stop you? And it's like, I just want to go home and curl up on my... I just want to go home, curl up on the couch, watch a Western and eat pie. I mean, honestly, I just want to eat pie. I want to eat pie and watch a Western. I don't want to live life. I don't want to go do anything. I just want to watch a Western. Have you ever been that way? You ever been that way? Oh, yeah. Because you feel that in that Western. Why? Because we like to be comforted, don't we? We like to be comforted. That's why all the best foods in the world are called comfort foods. 
Broccoli will never be a comfort food unless it's got a ton of cheese and a soup. Will it ever be considered comfort food? But why? When we go through trials and distress and frustration, what do we want? Fried chicken? Mashed taters and gravy? Mashed taters, not mashed potatoes. Mashed taters and gravy. Corn on top of them. What do we want? We want an apple pie. A la mode. You want a cobbler. You don't want diet soda. You want it leaded. You want it leaded. Why? Because we think that if we have all those things, that that's what will give us perfect peace and confidence. We think that that's what will do it. But it's only in Jesus. Because he's that comforter. He's that warm blanket that goes over you. You know, when I'm sick, I am 34 years old, and I still have my blankie. I still have a quilt that an old lady made for me, and it's a sailboat quilt. And when I'm sick, I, that quilt is with me because that's what comforts me. You know what? When you go through things in life, Jesus is that quilt. He will be that comforter for you. And you will find that perfect peace. And you will find that confidence again. And you will find that assurance again. That you can, that you can sit there right after just having a stroke and say that by, my, by his stripes I am healed. You can just sit there and you can say by his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. Why? Because that's where your confidence is found. So in the world you will have problems. But I have overcome the world. But I have overcome the world. Why? Because we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And what is our testimony? That my life was over, but Jesus stepped into it. Jesus stepped into my life. There used to be that old hymn, since Jesus came into my heart. I feel like we need to get out the old hymns. I'm kidding. But I have deprived it of its power to harm you, and I have conquered it for you. Are you more than than a conqueror through Christ? Are you? Come on, say it with me. Say, I am more than a conqueror in Christ. Look to your neighbor, say, cheer up. Look to your other neighbor, say, cheer up. Sometimes you just got to cheer up. I'm not talking about fake it till you make it stuff. I'm not talking about act like things are right even when they're not right. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about tapping into Jesus. And you tap into the one who has conquered it all for you. That is what you do. That is what you get into. You dig into him. Sometimes we feel the need that we always got to go deep. And we got to get deeper. We got to get deeper. Let me tell you, the water is the same whether, it's, whether you're immersed in it deep or whether it's just ankle deep. It's still the river of life going through you and going around you. So let's all say this. Say, I will cheer up. Because it, it will be as he said it will be. See, what's he said? I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the very end of the age of the age but we like to forget things don't we don't we we like to forget what God said why because when the distresses and the tribulation and the trials and the frustration of life just keep coming we then feel well what did I do what did I do what did I do or if you're married what did you do What did you do? Back in the day, we would go, there's sin in the camp. There's sin in the camp. (laughs) We'd become bloodhounds. We'd start trying to smell out the sin in the camp. (laughs) Did you go to the movies? Who went to the movies? That's what we would do. We went, when we lived in Michigan, we lived in Michigan, and we went to a Christian school. And this school had strict regulations that we could not go to the movies. If we were, this is what's funny. If we were seen at the movies, we'd be kicked out of school. Well, it's like, but that means that you were at the movies. <laughs> I mean, think about it. That's how it was. It's like, but you were at the movies too. 
So who's going to tattle on who? So my dad, being my dad, would take us 40 minutes outside of town to the movies to make sure nobody saw us. Why? Because we think that that's in Jesus. We think that that's in Jesus when really that is religion and that is just the frustration of the world. That is the frustration of the world. But when stuff would happen, what would we do? We would get out the scorecard and start, now Dave, I saw you the other day. And we'd start, there's sin in the camp. There's sin in the camp. Let me tell you, when Jesus showed up, there became victory in the camp. Victory showed up to the camp. And there is victory in your camp. He's not out smelling. (laughs) He's not out checking. He's not out... I mean, I knew a lady that when she grew up, that her mom kept a piece of, that her mom would check and make sure that there was not one speck of makeup and any of that, and just check that. And you know what? If that's how you live, great, and you're okay. But just know that Jesus loves you just the way you are. If you want to wear makeup, he loves you. If you don't want to wear makeup, you're okay. But just know that he loves you the way you are. You are. He's not going, he's not, Jesus didn't come to the disciples and go, okay, was it Peter, James, or John? Who caused this storm to happen? Who caused this storm? Because that's what happened to Jonah. When the storm started coming to Jonah, what they started doing? Smelling out the sin in the camp. And they started throwing people off till it got better. Let me tell you, that's not what God does. He's not going to throw you off the boat just so it'll become better. No, he's going to stand up in the middle of that storm and say, just shut up. Just be quiet. Just hush up. And I'm telling you, in your life, you got to stand up and you got to just tell yourself, shh, just be quiet. And don't be like my three-year-old when I say, just be quiet. I don't want to be quiet. No, just be quiet. Because you know what? The storms of life come from the enemy and sometimes from the inner me. For sometimes they come from the inner me. Deep down within me, I start digging stuff up that should have been left buried years ago. And we start digging it up and we start causing some storms. You just got to tell your insides just, shh, hush, hush. Get it, make it a little hairy-legged and go, hush, and just be quiet. Just be quiet. What did David say? He said, be still and know that I am who? God. Just be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that in me I have conquered the world. Be still and know that all distress and all frustration and all problems of this world, I have deprived it of its power to harm you. Just be undaunted. Be undaunted. Just don't stop doing what you're doing. You know, that's what's funny. I've been in, I like to say I've been in the ministry 34 years. Growing up with mom and dad, being with people, I've been around. And it's funny to me, when people go through storms of life, they quit going to church. They quit going to church. They quit calling their Christian friends. They quit doing all this stuff. Why? Because they think, because there's a lie of the enemy that will tell you that, well, it just didn't work. You tried it and it didn't work. No, no, the storm came because it is working. It is working. That's why Paul said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together with the brethren. Because it really does help. Because when you come and you're around fellow believers, it really does become a rally. And it becomes a rally, not of a freak out session, but it becomes a rally that there is victory in the camp. It becomes a rally that Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It becomes that you are freed in him. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's just.
Let's just lift up our hands right now and just know if you got one thing today, just know this. God just loves you. And in him, in him, he has conquered everything for you. He's deprived it of its power to harm you. He took its teeth out. Isaiah said that though the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And Jesus is the standard of the Lord. He is that standard that will never get washed away in a flood. That will always stand up in the middle of any issue, in the middle of any pain, in the middle of any hurt. Jesus will stand within you. He loves you and he cares for you. Don't feel like you're in the boat on the top deck and you feel like he doesn't care. Just go to the bottom of the boat and go to sleep. Just go to the bottom. Go down to the depths of your heart and just rest. And just know that he's already taken care of it. You're going to the other side. You're going to the other side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus to be the Lord of your life, it's not complicated. It's not hard. It's not difficult. You don't get saved. You accept Christ. You accept Christ. You accept that everything that Jesus did on that cross was for you. You accept that he took your sin, sickness, death, and poverty, and he nailed it to that tree, and he left it there. You accept him. The Bible says that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you'll believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved, secure forever, sealed sealed with him. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you today. Father, we just praise you. Father, we just honor you right now. And Lord, we just thank you right now for your love and for your peace that is in our lives. That Lord, you don't kick us out of the boat. You don't make us leave but that, Lord, that you have calmed every storm and that you have deprived it of every power. And, Lord, we thank you right now. And if you're here, you've never accepted Jesus, just let's all say this together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior and be my Lord. I turn from my old ways of living turn from my sin and I turn to you the one who loves me the one who cares for me the one who will take me through life I trust you now and I believe that I will go to heaven and I will enjoy the journey in Jesus name